Okay, I'd like to go ahead and call this meeting to order. Good, please. At, uh, about five minutes after three o'clock, uh, so I'd like to go ahead and get started. Uh, this is uh, the third meeting of the uh, Maple Heights Financial Planning and Supervision Commission meeting, uh, December 17th. And uh, welcome to everybody. Uh, what I'd like to do uh, before moving to roll call and, uh, and looking at the minutes um, is to do uh, just a, a few. Uh, introductions. Uh, first of all, um, yeah, I know for those who've been uh, in attendance um, for, for uh, this commission, uh, there's been uh, discussion at the first two meetings regarding uh, uh, governor's appointees uh, for uh, this commission. These were nominations um, that have been made uh, jointly uh, by the uh, council president and the mayor of Maple Heights. And, um, and the process basically is for those nominations to uh, go to the governor's office who by law has uh, the authority then to make appointments to this commission. And so I'm pleased uh, here today to introduce uh, two of the governor's appointees um, and uh, they uh, are to be commended for uh, volunteering uh, for, the, uh, for this commission. It's, uh, this is uh, not easy work. I think they both know that. Um, and, but uh, not only did they volunteer and, uh, and uh, go through the nomination process, uh, but ultimately were appointed by the governor. Um, uh, to my right, or left, I'm sorry, um, probably to most of your rights, <laughs> uh, is uh, uh, Mr. Gerald Arnold. Um, and uh, he was, uh, as I indicated, has been appointed. Um, and he is uh, uh, currently engaged in uh, 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 financial work uh, for the Archdiocese in Cleveland, and a resident of uh, the City of Maple Heights. Yes. Mr. Arnold, uh, welcome Thank to you. the commission. And uh, to my right um, is Mr. James uh, Pollock. Um, and uh, James, uh, again, has been appointed by the governor. He is um, a citizen of uh, Maple Heights and a, an employee uh, of the United States uh, Postal System, where he's a fiscal specialist. Um, and so, welcome, Mr. Pollock. Thank you. To the uh, as I indicated, um, you know, these uh, you know, these members um, are very important to our work. Um, they're uh, community uh, representatives, um, volunteers, uh, and so we're going to value uh, their input as we move along. I've had the opportunity to um, speak um, with each of them. Um, separately, and uh, but, but by phone, and, and uh, have covered a lot of the material um, that we covered in the first two meetings. So there is uh, as much up to speed as I could uh, could uh, uh, get them, I guess, with just over the phone and, and uh, sending them some information. So they're well aware of the bylaws. They're well aware of the introductory material um, that we had at the uh, at the first meeting. Um, and so uh, I brought them up to speed, uh, including uh, sort of an understanding that uh, actually up until uh, this meeting, we've not had a financial report, um, but we're, we have that pending here um, with this meeting. And so, so we really are still in the very, very early stages, uh, the very uh, you know, uh, uh, introductory stages, if you will, of this commission, and, and really just now um, getting underway, getting started. Um, and uh, there's a lot ahead of us. Also today um, with us is uh, the uh, council president-elect, uh, Richard Trojanski, um, who will be joining this commission, um, effective with the next meeting in January. Um, again, this, is, uh, this commission is established uh, under Chapter 118 of the Revised Code, and there are certain named members in that law uh, I'm a named member as the uh, representative from the Office of Budget Management, Mr. Sandberg, for um, the treasurer. Uh, the council president is a named member, and uh, the mayor also is a named member of, of this commission. Mayor Lansky. Hello. Join us at the table if you'd like, or we can listen to your uh, material too. Um, so, uh, so basically, those are named members uh, when uh, 
uh, Mr. Trajanski uh, takes his, his seat as, um, as council president uh, in January, he automatically becomes part of this committee and will, will sit um, with us. So uh, thank you for being here today. Uh, I appreciate your attendance. I think it's helpful um, so that you can hear um, what's, uh, what's happening today and start getting up to speed with uh, some of the issues uh, that this commission faces. Um, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get the, the meeting started uh, on a, an official basis. Um, and we will be able to take a look at the minutes, which I think I failed to put on the, the agenda. But that will be the, uh, the third item uh, on the agenda rather than the supervisor update. Um, so we, we do need to look at the minutes and approve them. I'm going to go to roll call first um, so that we uh, establish quorum. Uh, and um, starting with myself, of course, I'm here. Mayor Lansky? Here. Ms. Albers? Here. Mr. Senator? Here. Mr. Arnold? Here. Mr. Pollock? Here. Okay, we are operating with a, a quorum and actually full membership uh, at this point. Um, as I indicated, uh, the next item will be approval of the minutes. Um, those were handed out as a part of the packet, um, and I will provide you with a, a minute or two to uh, review those. And I will, uh, I will indicate also, uh, Mr. Arnold and uh, Ms. Pollack, given that you were not in attendance at the last meeting, I'll be for you to abstain, so you will not be a part of the uh, roll call group for approval and can, cannot move to have them accept the year. Again, these are uh, very, uh, very complete. Uh, good coverage of all of the major items that were discussed at the last meeting. Uh, I'd like to entertain a uh, motion to approve. So moved. Motion. Motion to approve by the mayor. And seconded by Ms. Albers. Uh, voice vote. All those in favor. Aye. Aye. Approved. The minutes are approved. Let's move on in the agenda then. And I'd like uh, for our financial supervisor uh, to provide an update on where we are with things. I know uh, effective with the last meeting, the, one of the key issues was generating a uh, uh, financial report. Um, and part of that was making sure we were at uh, as reconciled as we could be. Um, and so uh, I'm going to turn it over as Laura, are you going to be given to, to uh, Laura Brown, um, the auditor's office, to uh, walk us through uh, the financial report that uh, she's put together. Ms. Brown, go ahead. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. As Quentin said, uh, just to refresh memories and update from the last meeting, <coughs> the biggest issue was getting financial records and reconciliations up to date. Um, we've had staff from the auditor's office in helping the city get everything caught up for 2015. Um, so we do have October financials to present today, and I'll go through those in just a minute. There'll be a packet in front of each commission member that says October 31st at the top. Um, since I prepared this information um, earlier in the week, I did receive the November financial information from the city, and again, we have a AOS staff person who's working on reconciling that bank to both and, and verifying all that. She's working on that right now, so that should be done soon. Um, I'm going to go through this packet. It will probably grow in size as we move on further and I have more and better information. Right now it's pretty basic. Um, 
one other thing I want to point out to you is we deal a lot with funds, we talk about appropriations, estimated resources, and some of those things may be familiar to some commission members and not others. So if the commission would like, either at our January or February meeting, I could provide a quick kind of fund accounting 101 training for the commission if that's something you're interested in, to kind of bring everybody up to speed on the terminology and, and how governmental accounting works. It's a little different than you know those that might be in business or something else. I think, I think that would be appropriate, so let's, uh, let's make sure we do that. Um, if you want to go into the packet and turn to page one, please. This is a cash summary by fund of all funds of the city through the end of October. And if you look at the top, you'll see target percentages of 83.33%. What those are based upon is just taking 10 months over 12 and getting that percentage kind of give us a baseline. Now things aren't always even. You may have payments that come earlier or later in the year, but that gives us a baseline. Um, down the left-hand side, you can see the name of each fund of the city. And those are grouped into a few categories. The one at the top, general fund, fund 100, being the most important. Um, when I do that a little training for you at the next special meeting, I'll kind of go into some of the other funds and and tell you what those are, what those mean. But for right now, I think we're going to focus on general fund. Take a look in the first column. General fund started this calendar year with a balance of a deficit of just about $2.6 million. There was a range of funds to be That has since been transferred back into the general fund. So we started the year in general fund at about 2.6 negative. If you look at the bottom of the page in the first column, all funds at the beginning of the year were negative to about 36,000. So if every outstanding check would have been cashed on that day, they would have been negative to the total at the beginning of the year. As you move across the page, we have revenues and then expenditures, and it brings us over to our ending cash, which is the third column from the left, or from the right, excuse me. So they're called from the right ending cash. At the end of October, general fund was in the red at about $2.9 million. Now I will say when I looked at the November reports this week, that has gotten a little better in November. One reason it had gotten worse in October is because October was a three pay month. In some months you have three pays, some two. So um, October did look a little lower. November looks slightly better. <coughs> if you go down to the bottom of that column, you can see the total all funds cash was just over a million dollars. So when you look at that from the beginning of the year being in a deficit for all funds, going to a million dollars cash, that seems like things have improved greatly. However, you have to consider one thing. If you go right to the middle of the page, you'll see debt service, fund, bond retirement. It's fund 390. And if you look at that fund, ending cash, it had about 970000 the end of October. That fund receives property tax two times a year, so it had gotten all its revenues as of the end of October, but it had not made all of its expenditures. There were debt payments that come due. They're usually due December 1st. The city has since paid those debt payments right at the end of November, so that fund is now drained, if you will. So that total cash balance of a million dollars will be much lower when we get into November. That makes sense to everybody. A couple other things I want to point out on this report. It's new to everybody. If we go to the first section of revenues uh, between those two lines to the left. We've got three columns there, four columns there. We've got our annual budget. That's our estimated resources for the year. We've got year-to-date actual, so what's been received through October then a variance shows the difference, and then a percentage. And again, we use that target percentage or the number of months we are through the year as kind of a benchmark, um, but those things can fluctuate based on how revenues come in. For expenditures, same thing in the next section. We have our annual budget or our appropriations for 2015. Then we have the actual spending as of the end of October. 
variance is what's left of appropriations at that point, and then our percentage to show how much has been spent for the year. Then, like we discussed, we come to ending cash. The next column after ending cash is the outstanding encumbrances. Those are items that the city is obligated for, that they have purchase orders outstanding, bills that are yet to be paid. That's very difficult. Um, all cities do that according to budgetary law. And then our final column is the unencumbered cash balance. So if all those outstanding items were paid that are in encumbrances, that would be the ending balance that the city would have. So just to give you an overview. hit home on the point you're making about 83.33 being the benchmark. Yes. When we go down and we look at revenues, revenues are ahead by almost 10%. But then when we look at spending, it's also almost ahead by 10%, which is where, where there's been some improvement, but minor. Is that the way I look at this? We can't hear you over here. Sorry, right. speak up. The the uh, what I was saying is the benchmark for looking at this report on percentages is the 83.33 percent. That's the uh, 10 uh, divided by 12. 10 months in divided by 12 months gives you uh, where you should be on a percentage basis. Revenues are showing 93.6.96 percent, which would mean that they're ahead. They're ahead of what would have been assumed for this point by almost 10%. But then expending is also at 92.2%, which is also ahead of the 83%, which means, you know, that's the reason there hasn't been any more improvement in the bottom line than there has been. You're, you're saying there's, you know, th that when we, by the time we get to the bottom line, you're making the point particularly after you net out the debt service, that there might be some improvement, but but part of this is because of spending also exceeding but and I'm just trying to, to analyze what sure. you know what, what we're looking at and why why we are where we are. Sure. And and you can always have fluctuations based on timing. Like we said for October, it was a three pay month. So you're a little ahead of where you you know might be in a normal month. One thing I'd like to do for the commission in the coming months as we get better information and get to know the city a bit better is I'd like to do some uh, calculations for you that try to even those things out. So we take the payrolls into account when those fall. We take the debt payments into account to kind of smooth the data out and, and give us a better benchmark basically to go for. Right. But right now this is preliminary, so, so we're looking at that. But um, Okay. We'll, we'll go from there. Are there other questions on this page before we move forward? Okay. If we go over to page two, please. Actually, Laura, I do have a question. I'm sorry, um, right. sir. Yeah. Oh, I can't. Um, going over to page two, this is the city's bank reconciliation. Like I said, we've been in, our staff's been in reconciling between bank and book to make sure everything's in balance. You can see we list out each fund, or each account, excuse me, bank account of the city at the top. We back out any outstanding checks, and our adjusted bank balance is 1.175 million. The book balance is 1.069 million. There's a difference of about 106,000. You can see there at the bottom. That 106,000 is adjustments that we have accounted for in the bank reconciliation, but that as of the end of October, we hadn't yet identified to a fund. So I couldn't identify the fund on page one, so I kind of left them out here at the bottom. Since then, I just talked to the person doing the reconciling today. Since then, most of those things in November, the city has posted and identified. So at the end of November, we're still carrying some adjustments, but there are typical kind of recent month things that then may clear out as you go to the next month and then go ahead. So we are getting getting much closer on the reconciliations and, and we are in balance. So I guess just as a benchmark for the commission to work with how long, I mean, when we get to the point where this is being done on a regular basis, should this be done at least by the middle of the month so that we have an accurate accounting 
at month's end yes. by the middle of the next month. Yes, and typically with most cities, we'll set our commission meetings for about this time about of the, the month, of the month. Mm -hmm. because as you have the prior months, the cities had time to close their books and reconcile. We've had time to analyze the data and prepare documents for you. So yes, typically about midway through the next month. And many times recovery plans will set a date in the verbiage of the financial recovery plan that council and the commission will approve it will set a target date that you know by the 12th of each month let's say the city is to be balanced and reconciled so that's something that that we could look to put in the plan as well um, so that is good news that we're getting caught up and, and like i say by the end of november we should see most of those things getting identified and posted very good okay um if we go over to page three This is mainly just for commission members to take a look at as you have time. Um, in the future, I'll hope to get these packets out to you about a week before the meeting, but you know, as we get caught up with information. But I just want to tell you what this is. This is just more detail for the general fund. So again, we have the first column being the budgeted revenues or appropriations for 15. Then we have what's been received or spent year to date, a variance and a percentage. And this just gives more details so that we can see individual things like at the top our two biggest revenues property tax and income tax property tax is received twice a year so that's been what's there is pretty much what they're going to get so you can see the little below estimates whereas income tax is something that's received every month so they're closer to targets there um, so this is something that commission members can look through before the next meeting and you know if there's questions about certain detail items we can certainly look into those um, the first page and a half or so is revenues and then you'll get into the expenditures and you'll see that it is by department of the general fund and we summarize under each department personal services which is salaries and benefits of employees and then other which is everything else in those departments that's the fund that's in a deficit that's why we're here <coughs> is to correct that issue so um, if we would see other funds that would cause us concern you know we would bring this to your attention but at this point we're focusing in on general fund is that's the main operating fund of the city is there anything else of particular note here um, as we get ready to close I mean, in terms of what has been budgeted and where the city is. I mean, there are a couple of designs and those are, some are under, but there are some that are over, some significantly over. Is that a concern again towards the end of this year? Um, it certainly would be. I know that I spoke with the finance director this morning, and they've been working on amending the 2015 budget before year end to get everything kind of cleaned up, if you will, on those line items. So once I receive that final budget, um, then I could do more analysis and see if there's anything you know, that's just under appropriated and that won't have enough to cover by year end. And that's typical in most cities that when you budget towards the beginning of the year, throughout the year you have to make adjustments and then at year end you kind of make your final adjustments to even everything out. And so really in terms of looking at this report, it's a good report through 10 months. But you know, you're going to need to get through the end of the year after these reconciliations and after these adjustments that are going to be made before we really see how this lands in terms of a item by item budget. But this is, I mean, it gives a pretty good idea of where, where, uh, you know, what are the larger items and what are the larger items that are over and under. Are there other questions from the 
Um, I think uh, then, I'm sorry, I mm -hmm. do you have a clarification? Yes. Okay, yes, please. On page four, uh, just a clarification of the dispatcher and the team guards, the Lord, you probably need to check the calculation for the team guards and the dispatchers here in the Banners College. Thank you, Irene. It's a bad formula. Right. May I make a comment on the previous page or not? Mm -hmm. Certainly, if there's a clarification involved. Well, yes, it's not a clarification. It's in regards to the um, $106,000 in page two. Uh, when we went through the reconciliation with another team under the governance of this body, uh, there were certain items which I mentioned at the last commission meeting that were duplicates in terms of the uh, adjustments and for the most part it's hundred and six thousand dollars which the team had to go back to reconcile it's not a reconciliation that was needed on our part but on their part because we found some items that were duplicated so the hundred and six thousand represent a lot of that and then just also just to clarify just on that point, okay. uh, I understand the, the minutes did capture the, that uh -huh. you had made that comment at the last meeting. Um, and I guess I'm not sure who you're saying it was on their end, not your end. Who, who are you referring to as their end? I'm referring to the team from the state that was assigned to reconcile this. Right. And we did work extensively in terms of our so, so what you're saying is they had already been reconciled. They captured them as a reconciliation, but they'd already been reconciled. Yes. And that was captured in the, Thank in the minutes from the last meeting. Thank you. For page 7, the last line of cross poll expenditures. I think your variance column is, doesn't match the front page. So it's, I will double check that, thank you. It may be where I was running those reconciling items through, and they have made an error. Was it double? Mm -hmm. I think it's a formula error where I was running those through. Thank you, though, I will double check that. Anything else on the financial report? 